What do you do when a wildfire happens and you need to escape, but you're in prison? In fall of 2021, this was a real question that came up for the Californian town of Susanville. Wildfires took out power, leaving some people without lights, cooking, ventilation, and working toilets. When asked what would happen if the flames reached them, prison guards reportedly told inmates, you effers are going to stay in your cell. My name is Isaiah Hernandez and this is Queer Brown Vegan. My platform is to bring you environmental education that's focusing on intersectional issues rather than ignoring them. If you like what you see here, consider to like, comment, and subscribe because it helps me grow my channel and bring you more educational content. Most people don't realize that around a fifth of Californians' prisons are in places with the highest risk of wildfires. This includes where incarcerated firefighters are trained and working which are intentionally in most fire prone areas. Oh, you didn't know about incarcerated firefighters? Yes, that's a true fact. In the CBS show Fire Country, we follow the life of Baudet, an incarcerated firefighter with an intricate backstory. He's white, but that's fine. The actor also co-wrote the series based on it on his experiences growing up in Sonoma and seeing incarcerated firefighters throughout his life. Even though his story is fictional, it's far from the truth. In the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection, there are 208 hand crews. Of those, 192 are made up of incarcerated people. Incarcerated firefighters have become a hot topic. No pun intended. Most people focus on how little they're paid, but there's a bigger issue, and let's talk about it. Incarcerated firefighters are paid $2 an hour, which sounds an awful lot like modern day slavery. But a lot of these people are excited to join because prison jobs only pay 50 cents an hour, and it seems okay because the Department of Fire Protection needs workers and the prisoners make more money, so what's the problem? Well, you can say morally that being a firefighter and saving lives lives and habitats should be more dignified, so these people shouldn't be exploited or working for poverty wages. But let's zoom out. The Department of Fire Protection is understaffed, its seasonal workers are overworked and underpaid, so they aren't equipped to address wildfire risks in the states of climate change. It makes sense that they're understaffed considering the salaries are under $50,000 a year for 16 hour days and 14 day straight working schedules. So even with their incarcerated workers, they're failing behind unable to enact solutions. Because of this, they've called for more funding Funding, but unfortunately, even after the state's wildfires of 2021, the department only received 0.7% of the state's budgets that year. Meanwhile, you know who has gotten money? It's prisons, which are overwhelmingly at risk of being caught in these wildfires. In just two decades, the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation went from receiving 2% to 8% of the state's budget, building 23 new prisons from 1980 to 2000 and becoming the state's largest agency. Wildfires are increasing. The Department of Fire Protection isn't getting funding, but prisons are. How are we supposed to protect and bring justice to people that are serving sentences because of mass incarceration, the state government is too slow to act. Evacuations because of disaster become unlikely due to overcrowded prisons. Experts like Carly Purdom recognizes that this logistics nightmare is causing a humanitarian crisis as fires get worse. For states like California to better address this issue, the state government must fund better opportunities and working conditions for employment with the Department of Fire Protection. While also working to close prisons and end mass incarceration, the Legislative Analysis Office and nonpartisan state agency also suggested to closing some prisons. The over $20 billion of infrastructure repairs that prisons need is so high that they're calling to halt repairs and instead release people. This complex issue gives us an idea of how the climate crisis intersects with U.S. prison systems and its mass incarceration. It also shows us how these issues can be solved in tandem. If our government reduced the number of incarcerated people, focus on working on the economic class prosperity, especially in communities of color, then reinvesting money to fund real jobs at the Department of Fire Protection, we would be better for wildfires and get people out of harm's way. Currently, California's fire management requires a large incarcerated population, and that is unsustainable. Thanks so much for watching this video, and if you'd like for me to explore other topics, let me know in the comments below and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe as this continues to support my channel. Thank you so much.